Last week, we began a, a series called The Bucket List. The bucket list is this idea. You, you've probably heard the, the expression before. It's, it, a lot of times people will have things that they want to do before they go to heaven, on this side of heaven. So they'll create a bucket list. And this is a little bit different. This bucket list are, are, is comprised of things that we did in 2022 that we don't want to repeat in 2023. Oh, you like that one, right? Mm -hmm. I am with you there. There are just things that I did in 2022 I do not want to repeat in 2023. There are, there are addictions that, that, that someone else has had. There's things in our lives that get a hold of us that we need to break. And the way we break that is we recognize what they are. And, and, and so part of this process is that there are things that in 2022 or maybe even beyond 2022 that 2023 is our year to break them, to, to step past them, to change, to make changes in our life. That's what this bucket list is about. But we learned last week that we change based on what we do or do not do. Talking about it with the very best intentions will not make a blessed difference in your life other than you'll feel bad at the end of the year when you didn't do anything. It's not enough to think it. You have to do it. You have to take action. That's what this bucket list is about. Taking action on the things in our lives that we do not want to repeat in 2023. So the question is always the same, whether it's a physical list or a spiritual list or even an emotional list. It's the same. The question is, where do I start? What's the first thing that I do on my bucket list? Because it's easier to do a bucket list if you prioritize things. You give everything. Every person, every place, everything to the Lord. You putting everything that is important to you or unimportant to you, all of it comes under the sovereignty of God. Remember what we read in Matthew? Seek the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. The very first step on our bucket list is to give every person, place, and thing in our life to the Lord, to place them below him. And here's how we do this. We give up our will for his will. We give up our way for his way. We set aside our desires for his desires. Everything in our life must be subject, come under the authority of God. That's where our bucket list starts. Because if we don't do that, if we don't make that the first action in our life, the first thing that we do, nothing else will work. And for those of us who have tried to do it on our own, we know it does not work without the power of God in our life. And that's where we start. That's where change starts. That's the first thing that we do to affect change in our life. Have you ever had something in your life that you just didn't want to do? And I mean, it wasn't that you couldn't do it. It was that you didn't want to do it. Yes, I've had those things in my life. And I, I, I personally, I'm very strong in my character, so I avoid them. <laughs> I avoid them. I put them off. Why? Because they're hard. They're difficult. I have something in my, in my life, even to this day that I struggle with, that is very hard for me and I avoid it and it's waiting. Now I've joked about this before. I've said, oh, I'm the guy that drives 10 miles out of the way to, to not have to sit in traffic. And I hate sitting in, tra you know, standing in line for amusement, ri amusement rides. Like I'm that guy, right? I've joked about that, but I want to tell you something. Waiting for me is really a hard thing. It's not just being impatient. It's hard for me to wait. And where it gets really difficult for me, maybe some of you can, can uh, relate to this. It's very hard for me when I want something. Like I want something. I want it yeah. now. I don't want to wait. And so I have found ways 
to buy things that I want that I should have waited on until I had the money to buy, but I had credit, so I walked down a plastic card, and I got what I wanted right then and there. And I've caused financial trouble for myself doing that, being unwilling to do the hard thing, which is wait. It's hard. I don't like doing it. So too many times in my life, I don't do it. You see, we can do the hard things in our life. The question is, not can we. The question is, will we? That's the question. Don't you have things like that in your life? Maybe a difficult conversation you need to have with your spouse. Don't look at her right now. Don't look at him. Don't look at her. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. It's a hard. You need to have a conversation, but you don't want to have it. Why? Because you don't like sleeping in the other, per, in the other neighbor's garage. You like sleeping in your bed. No, I mean, you, there's conversations that you need to have, but we avoid them because they're hard. They're difficult. Maybe there's conversations you need to have with a friend or you need to have with a coworker or, or an adult child. And that's hard. And so we don't, we avoid them. But part of our bucket list is doing the hard things in our life because that's where change comes from. If you want to change something, you have to do the hard things or nothing changes. Maybe you've got financial troubles that you're, you're working through and you know that there are things that you need to stop, start, you need to change. But they're hard. But if you don't change them, your financial situation doesn't change. You, there, listen, <laughs> I talked about this a little bit last week. Like, I'm really trying to change me. I want to be healthier. I want to be healthier physically and mentally. Maybe some of you want the same kinds of things for you. You want to be in better shape. You want to, you maybe want to lose weight. Maybe you want to tone up. Maybe you just want to be healthier. So you want to watch what you eat. Those are hard things. Has anybody ever tried any of those crazy things, like eating right? Right? Who likes broccoli? <laughs> Me. But it's hard, so we don't do it. We don't do it, because it's hard. But that's where change comes from. That's where change comes from. Because here's the thing that we forget. We become so focused on the cost of the difficult, the cost or difficulty of doing something that we completely ignore the fact that there is also a cost or consequence of doing nothing. And I would argue, and for those of you that have walked this path that I have walked, I would argue that the Cost, consequences, and difficulty of doing nothing, not having that conversation, not making the changes in your physical, mental health, not doing the things you need to do financially, not doing the things you need to do as a dad, not doing the things you need to do with a mom, on and on and on. The consequences and the cost are much higher. It is more difficult, it is more painful not to do something than it is to do the hard thing and make the change. It doesn't seem that way up front, but that's how it turns out, isn't it? There's a cost to not doing anything. There's a cost to not doing the hard things. And our lives will not change. We will not be able to leave behind the things in 2022 that we want to leave behind if we are not willing to do the hard things and face the hard things in our life in 2023. That's the next part of our bucket list. Bring everything under the authority of the Father and then... Do the hard stuff. Do the hard stuff. Make the hard decisions. Do the hard things. Because the question is not, can I? The question is, yes. Would you pray with me? Father, Lord, we ask we ask that you would make our hearts soft, Lord, to receive your word this morning. And God, we know that all power, every, every bit of strength that we have comes from you. 
So we ask for that strength this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to be in a very familiar piece of scripture for a lot of us here this morning. We're going to be in Philippians chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 10. Philippians 4 verse 10. I'll give you a second to turn there or you can pull up your favorite Bible app. If you're joining us online, then you'll have it pop up on the screen there for you. Or you can look right over my shoulder here. Philippians 4, 10. It says, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have a chance to help me. This is the Apostle Paul. He's writing from prison. It's called a prison epistle or, or a prison letter. He's writing to his church in Philippi. And he says, I'm so pleased that you're concerned for me and that you've always been concerned for me. And you didn't have a chance to help me in the past. Verse 11 says, not that I was ever in need, for I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. This may sound a little bit off, how being content or not being in content or or, or being discontent could actually affect your ability to do hard things. But here's what I want you to understand what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I never felt in need because I was content. Now, How could Paul possibly be content in prison? More than likely, he was under house arrest, and so he was consistently uh, chained with some other soldier 24-7, seven days a week, forever. I mean, for for the time that he was in prison. How could he possibly say, I've I've not been in need? Plus, when you read the book of Acts, you read about his journeys and the things that he went through. How many times he was, he was beaten, he was bit by a snake. I mean, how could he possibly say that I wasn't in need? But I learned to be content. It's because he, was, he did the first step of our bucket list, and that was he put every person, place, or thing under the authority of of God. And he knew that God was his provider. He knew that God was watching over him. He knew that God had called him and therefore he stepped out and went where God told him to go. He set his way aside and picked up God's way. He set aside God, his will and picked up God's will. He got, he set his desires aside and picked up God's desires. And therefore he was not in need because he was content knowing that his God, his God, your God, my God would meet every need. And so in that resting, in that knowing, he learned to be content. I'm sure that that there are hard times in your life and there's hard times in my life where we feel in need. We feel like we have less than we need. But God says that if you trust me, I will give you what you need. It says, we read it just a little bit ago. If, if, if you will seek my kingdom above all else in righteousness, and I will give you what you need. And we talked about this last week. There's a reason why it says kingdom and not seek God's opinion, seek God's approval. We seek his kingdom because he is king and Lord of all. He is God. He is the star breather. He is my creator. He is your creator. He is God above all. And I say it this way. There is one throne in our lives. And if we're sitting on it, then there's no place for him to sit. He is Lord of all. And he calls us to make him king over our lives, sovereign Lord over our lives. And through that, we learn to be content. Contentment is learned through our circumstances, but not defined by them. 
You will not learn to be content based on your circumstances. If you're waiting for your circumstances to help you feel content and at peace of where you are, you will always be discontented. You will always be a lacking of peace because peace comes from God and God alone. It is only when we bring our lives under his authority that finally we have peace. Finally, we have rest. And we feel contentment. We feel contentment when we should not feel contentment. That joy that passes all understanding, that peace that passes all understanding. We, we shouldn't, but we do. Why? Because God is in control and we're not. Seek first the kingdom of God. Look at Philippians 4.12. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a stomach full, a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. You know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying that if we're not careful, we will become victims of our circumstances instead of overcoming our circumstances. That's what he's saying. Because he says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it's with a full stomach or empty, whether I have plenty or little. I have learned to trust the Lord in all things. That's what he's saying. To do hard things, to, do, to face the things in your life that are difficult, that are hard. We have to be willing to bring it all under the Lord. And then we have to be willing to learn from the the things that we go through as he provides for us, as he takes care of us, the circumstances that we go through, to recognize that he is Lord above all. We can trust him. And remember, we talked about the difference last week also of difference between faith and trust. Faith saves you. Trust changes your life. The moments of our life are not dependent on our circumstances, but are dependent on what we choose to do or not do in those circumstances. That's the hard things. Paul is saying, I've been in need. I mean, I've, I've, I've not had anything that I needed, and yet I was still content. And the secret, the secret to living in every situation, even the hard things, is knowing that God is in control. And he can only be in control when we allow him to be in control. Paul discovered the secret to living in every situation, even the hard things. How many of you know this verse? Philippians 4.13, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That's the secret. That we can do, we can do everything. The King James Version says all things. There is nothing that you cannot do. Through Christ, who gives me strength. If we try to do it on our own, if we try to especially the hard things in our life that we need to change, that we need to think differently about, the decisions that we need to make, conversations we need to have. If we don't do those hard things, it is not because we can't do them. It's because we choose not to do them. Because this verse says that we can do everything. All things through Christ who strengthens me. That through Christ part is extremely important. Because when you try to do it on your own and you try to think differently and have you ever, have you ever had something you, you really wanted to do? You really wanted to do it. And maybe even made a goal and you wrote it down. But you didn't do it. Why? Why? Because you didn't do it. It's 
really not any harder than, than that. But we can choose to do or not do, but it never has to do with our ability. Through Christ Jesus, we are able to do it all, anything and everything that he calls us to do. But we have to decide that we will do it. We will make the hard choices. We will face the hard things in our life. Thinking about it, talking about it, writing it down is a great place to start, but it will not change our lives. So what this is meant to do for us is that, A, we bring everything under God, and B, we know that we can do whatever God has called us to do. We can do the hard things in our life. We can face the hard things in our life, knowing that through Christ Jesus, we have the strength to do it all. The problem is too many times we try to do it on our own. We read a good book. We listen to a good message. And we try to do it in our own strength. And not that those are bad things, but it's not enough. Doing it on your own is not enough. Only through the power of Christ, only through the Holy Spirit in you, Holy Spirit in me. That's the only way we are able to face the hard things in our life. In fact, Isaiah says it this way. Isaiah 30, 15 says, this is what the sovereign Lord. Pause. This is what the. What does sovereign mean? What does it mean? It's not a trick question. What does it mean? What does sovereign mean? Above all, there is nothing higher. There is nothing greater. There is no president. There is no king. There is no person. There is nothing, no one, no how greater and more awesome and more in control than our God. And guess what? He's speaking right now through the prophet Isaiah. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. Only in returning to the Lord. Are you facing hard things in your life as I'm facing things in my life? I will only be able to and you will only be able to overcome those things by returning to the Lord and saying, you know what, Lord? Your way, Father. I'm going to do it your way. I'm not going to do it my way. I'm not going to get way out in front and then ask you to come clean up my mess. I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to say, Lord, you are sovereign. You are the Holy One of Israel. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go where you go, and I'm not moving until you move. That is how we face the hard things in our life. And then there's this quietness, and there's this strength that comes from the Spirit of God in us. Do you realize you don't have to do this thing called life alone? I don't have to do it alone. We have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God in us. Jesus is our Savior. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. And we can do all things in in His strength. But we have to do it in His strength, not on our own intellect. Here's the question that hit me, and I'm going to share it with you. How can I know I have what it takes to face and overcome the hard things in my life? How can I know? How can I know that I can overcome them? And I I know our theologians and our Bible scholars are saying, well, Donnie, it just said that in Philippians. That I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. But did you ever doubt? Did you ever wonder, is is it really true? I mean, does Jesus really, seriously... Does he have the strength in me? Do do, do I have the strength through him? Is his spirit strong enough in me that I really can do the hard things that I'm facing right now financially in my marriage, in in my world, at my job? Do I really 
can I really overcome these things? Can I face these hard things for real? Like when I close my eyes at night and I lay down and nobody else is around and it's just me, can I really feel the peace of God in my heart knowing that Philippians 4.13 is true? Let me tell you something about Jesus. He left heaven for you. He left heaven for you. He came here for you. By the way, he was sitting next to Father God. He said he was on his right hand. He came to earth for you. And he allowed a group of men to beat him until his own mother wouldn't recognize him. He allowed them to put a, 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 a crown of thorns on his head Thorns that would be about the size, half size of my finger. And then beat that in with a, with a reed, with a rod. And I'm not being graphic on purpose. I want you to understand that we can sometimes sterilize the crucifixion and what our Savior faced. Look it up. Google it. The crucifixion is one of the most brutal, if not the most brutal way that man has ever developed to execute another human being. And Jesus Christ left heaven for you to face that. Let me tell you something else about him. While he's hanging on a cross, can hardly breathe. He takes a breath, pushes himself up, takes a breath and says, Father, Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know why I'm here. They don't know I'm doing this for them. That's, that's the strength of our Savior. Now listen, some of us have forgiveness here to deal with in our hearts. I can promise you, as bad as the person has offended you that you need to forgive, they have not beaten you, put crown of thorns on your head, and stuck you on a cross. And Jesus, in his strength and his, his just, his perfection, says, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Let me tell you something else about him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let me tell you something else about him. He gave up his spirit. Did you know that? Did you know that Jesus, nobody took his life? Do you know that it says he breathed his last and he gave his life for you? He gave his life. He laid it down. Took his last breath. And there was silence. And then they put him in a tomb. They buried him. But let me tell you something else about your, your Jesus. On the third day, it sounded something like this in that tomb. <sighs> and he took his little finger and he just moved the rock out of the way. And he walked out. And he walked with men and women for about 40 days. And then he went back to heaven to sit once again at the right hand of the Father. And that's where he sits today. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives and breathes in you. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, then the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And you can face hard things. You can do anything in the name of that Jesus. That this world tried to kill and destroy. And he walked out alive. 
and he is alive today. And that's how I can tell you that you can do the hard things in your life through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Because he conquered death, he conquered hell, he conquered sickness. He destroyed it all. And one day, let me tell you one more thing about him. Are you ready? Just one more thing. Let me tell you one more thing. One day, you're going to get to see him. You're going to see him. And, and, and it's going to be this incredible moment that there'll be, there'll be billions, if not hundreds of billions of people. I mean, how everybody that has ever been saved will be standing there. And he'll, he'll only see you. And you'll only see him because he is your personal savior. How is that going to happen? I have no idea, but I cannot wait to see him. And I want you to know that that is the power that you and I have to face the hard things in our life. The spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. That's why it says in Christ, I, have, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Two quick things and I'm done. Number one, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to do the hard things in your life. Go home, make a list, type them out, whatever you need to do to get them somewhere. But then start to do them. Make the phone call, send the emails. Visit, get in your car and go where you need to go. Do the hard things in your life through the power of Jesus who lives in you. Don't just sit back and let 2023 be another 2022, 21, 20, all the way back to who knows when. Let 2023 be the year that you change the things in your life that you know you need to change, that you want to need to change. Do it. Don't talk about it. Do it in the power of Jesus. Young people, you have seen in your lives bad examples. Bad examples of what it means to be courageous. And I, I want to encourage you to Lean into your Savior and not take by what's going on around you, but lean into Jesus and let him be. Let him be the one that speaks to your life. Let him be the one that guides you. Don't shy away from doing hard things. Do the hard things. Do them. Take it from me. Waiting on something is a good thing. And at the end of the day, when you've waited, it's so much more precious than if you've somehow manipulated to get what you want right now. 2023, let this be the year that you look back on and you say, that's the year that changed my life because I was willing to do the hard things. You're not going to get a lot of encouragement in the young people that are in your life unless they're on the same path as you. So be strong, be courageous, and stay diligent committed to the Lord. Let him help you do the hard things that you're facing right now. I'd ask you to stand with me this morning. We, we can make a difference in the people's lives that are around us. We can make a difference in our neighbors' lives, in our coworkers' lives, in the people that we go to school with. We can make a difference in their lives. Because Jesus, Jesus gives us the power to do hard things. And if we do hard things, our lives change. We become more like him. And we are able to then have the courage to speak, to, to act, to be like him while we're in the midst of our families, in the midst of workers, in the midst of our neighborhood, in the midst of our communities. And, and it is the power, it is that same spirit in us that gives us the courage and the ability to do hard things that will speak 
and draw people to him. If we will, if we will do the hard things, God will change you. He'll change your family. He'll change your community. And if enough of us buy into this, our world will change. I believe that. There are too many people, and you run into them all the time. There are too many people in our life unwilling to do the hard things. And we don't want to be that way. We want to do the things that God is calling us to do. To do the hard things. To make the changes. So that 2023 is a year that we look back on as a church, as a group of people, as moms, as dads, that we look back on and we say, that was the year that things changed because we decided to do something in the power and the majesty of Jesus. Father, we love you. And we're so, gosh, Lord, I don't even know what the word is. I, overwhelmed. Uh, uh, un, unbelieving that you would send your son and that Jesus you would come and die for us you would go through what you went through just so that we could once again have relationship with you Lord there are lots of us in this room who are facing very difficult decisions we're facing things that we need to do that we need to change and God we we know that we can do it through you. But Father, I ask for us to have the will to do it, that you would, you would give us the strength of will to make those hard decisions, to do the right things, to do the hard things, Father. And we wouldn't just do them for us, Lord, but we would do them for you. That our lives would reflect your glory and your honor, that people would see you in us. And Jesus, as you are helping us do these hard things, giving us the, the strength to do them, that people would see you in our lives. That our lives would be different in 2023. Because of you. In Jesus' name, amen.